So far, we have been studying fluids at rest. Now we will move on to moving fluids. We will be studying simplified ideal fluids in this course. Our ideal fluids are non-viscous, which means not syrupy at all, and incompressible. Even for gases, in this unit, we will pretend that they are not compressible and their densities stay constant. The fluid flow shall be steady with no turbulence. Now let's consider a steady flow of fluid through a pipe with different cross-sectional areas. If the cross-sectional area A1 is larger than the cross-sectional area A2, which flow speed must be faster, V1 or V2? V2 must be faster. You probably already have this kind of experience. For example, when you water a garden and you want the water to come out of the hose at a faster speed, what do you do? You can pinch the hose to reduce the cross-sectional area and the flow speed would increase. So if I want the water to come out faster from this hose, I just have to pinch the hose. If I make the cross-sectional area smaller, the flow speed will be faster. Because mass is conserved, the rate at which mass flows in from one side must be equal to the rate at which mass flows out on the other side. We cannot have 5 kilograms of fluid flowing in per second and have only 3 kilograms of fluid flowing out per second. Otherwise, we would have 2 kilograms of fluid accumulating in here per second. Nor can we have 3 kilograms flowing in per second and 5 kilograms flowing out per second. The mass flowing in per unit time must equal to the mass flowing out per unit time. Let's say in time delta t, the distance traveled by the fluid is d1, and uh, the mass is density times the volume, and the volume of flow in that time is the volume of this cylinder. The volume of a cylinder is the cross-sectional area times the length of the cylinder. So the volume of flow here is A1 times D1. And of course, the mass on the other side would also be the density times the volume. The density will be the density on that side, rho 2. And times the volume will also be A times D, so it be A2, D2. So that's the mass in divided by the time equals the mass out divided by time. And uh, what is the distance traveled divided by the time? The distance traveled divided by the time is the speed. So this will be rho 1 a1 times v1 equals to rho 2 a2 times uh, v2. And if the fluid is incompressible, that means the density stays the same. The density doesn't change just because the fluid flows to the other side. And that means rho 1 and rho 2 can cancel, and we're going to get A1V1 equals to A2V2. And this is what we will use for this course, because in this course we deal with the incompressible fluid. But both of these equations, they are called the equation of continuity. The equation of continuity tells us that the cross-sectional area times the flow speed is a constant. The smaller the cross-sectional area, the bigger the flow speed. So if A2 is one-fifth of A1, then this flow speed V2 would have to be five times the V1. It is important for you to know that the equation of continuity comes from the mass conservation. There's another equation you should know over here. The mass of flow per unit time is the density times the cross-sectional area times the flow speed. And the mass is also density times the volume, which means A times V gives us the volume of flow per unit time. So this A times V is the volume 
of flow per second, and we call it volume flow rate or volume rate of flow.